Before we get started, heads up, this video contains the slightest of Deadpool 2 spoilers. Really, it's nothing, but I have to officially warn you. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's discuss what's next for Deadpool and friends. But the wrinkle is that nobody knows, not even Ryan Reynolds himself. And that's because of the deal that everybody's talking about. Everybody who makes entertainment and everybody who cares about entertainment. And that, of course, is Disney's acquisition of Fox's entertainment assets. And while Disney and the Murdochs are moving ahead as if it's a done deal, or perhaps to will it to be a done deal, Comcast is still standing by. Now, literally, with billions in cash to make an all-cash offer to shareholders should the government approve the AT&T Time Warner merger. Why? Well, that was the flimsy excuse that the Murdochs used for going with Disney in the first place over Comcast. Although the reality is, is that the Murdochs would simply rather be in business with the mouse than the peacock. They want to sit at the cool kids table, and really, who doesn't these days? It's even turned Ryan Reynolds into a team player. Look at him playfully, but still respectfully, teasing Disney at every turn as he promotes Deadpool 2. While Disney works hard to undercut his movie uh, in an effort to protect Solo. Nobody said it was a two-way street, and it rarely is with Disney. So first, what we're going to talk about is what Fox would like to do next, and then we'll discuss what Kevin Foggy will likely do if he suddenly finds these action figures in his toy box. Now, on the press tour for Deadpool 2, both Ryan Reynolds and Josh Brolin have been very vocal about the fact that what's up next for them, as far as they're concerned, right now, in this moment, uh, is Drew Goddard's X-Force movie. They've been talking about Goddard with high praise quite a lot, actually. And Goddard got that deal last year to write and direct X-Force, uh, uh, which Ryan Reynolds has said will take the place of Deadpool 3. There will not be a Deadpool 3. Instead, they'll make this X-Force movie. And uh, last time he was asked, Drew Goddard was like, yeah, I'm, I'm still making that movie. But again, the Disney Fox deal is not official yet. So you can't you can't go tell someone they're not making a movie if you're not officially the boss of them, okay? Uh, now, Brolin, for his part, has said that an X-Force movie will be part of the four-picture deal he has signed to play Cable. And in true adorable, not used to making big, successful commercial movies form, Brolin was sure to clarify to reporters that he didn't ask for a multi-picture deal. It was thrust upon him. So remember, he's still a humble artist and all. Uh, sidebar, uh, Brolin now, of course, is also Thanos, right, to boot. And to be fair, his legit acting chops shine through brilliantly in both movies. So I think he can stop apologizing for, for slash being embarrassed by Jonah Hex and own his current mainstream success. Um, I don't think that Feige's going to honor that four-picture deal and wouldn't have to, I don't believe. Or well, actually, just because someone has a four-picture deal, just for those of you who... Because this, this comes up actually a lot with uh, Marvel deals and contracts because they're signed for so many movies. Uh, and, and actually, in a number of franchises, this is the situation. But just because the studio has the option... This also isn't a two-way street. Life rarely is a two-way street, even beyond Disney. Just because the actor is required to show up for a certain number of pictures doesn't mean that the studio ever has to make those pictures or call them call them up because I'm sure it doesn't specify which pictures Brolin has to be in. The only way that this benefits the actor no matter what is if it's a pay or play deal and that what that means is if you don't play you still get paid. Uh, although I don't think Brolin came to the negotiating table in either of these deals with the kind of clout to get a pay or play deal. All right so anyway back to Goddard. Deadpool 2 sets up a potential roster for an X-Force movie. This is the very slight spoiler. And that's uh, Deadpool, Cable, Domino, Colossus, and Dopinder. They might want to rethink that last one. He was uh, the only character in the movie, the sequel, that I did not enjoy. Anyway, Goddard, a consultant on Deadpool 2, because again, he's next to take up the reins, could obviously change up that roster once he gets his hands on the team. Although, obviously, he'll be directed to keep, well, by Fox, Deadpool, and Cable. And likely, I would say Domino as well. Uh, and hopefully, it does a little more with her than was done in the sequel. Uh, Goddard is an incredibly talented filmmaker, breaking into the biz with his Cloverfield script, then cementing his status as a talent to watch with his directorial debut, 
cabin in the woods. He also helped develop uh, Daredevil before he got fired, well, sidelined. He still is like um, an advisor and sometimes contributes. But he was sidelined on Daredevil because he angered Isaac Perlmutter, who was then still actively involved in, at Marvel before he got into trouble himself. Uh, you shake things up, sometimes you get shaken too. Uh, but then, uh, but what happened is that because uh, Drew Goddard got the Sinister Six deal at Sony, he upset Perlmutter, and that resulted in him being sidelined on Daredevil. Although he did an awfully nice job setting it up, don't you think? It's to many people still their favorite Marvel Netflix show. Line two with Jessica Jones, a very close second. Uh, but when that, uh, when the Sinister Six deal ironically fell through, Hollywood's a fickle business. Uh, Goddard rebounded in spectacular fashion with his script for The Martian. Seriously, an amazing script. And Fox was so happy with him, as they should have been, that they rewarded him with bad times at the El Royale, his super secret thriller, which he writes and directs and opens this fall from Fox. So he's Fox's guy. But what happens when, if Disney comes in? Well, for starters, as much as it might break the hearts of those of us who have loved the X-Men movies, warts and all, Foggy will li likely want to start from scratch. We can cry, us fans can cry into the sympathetic arms of fans of Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man. He did nothing wrong! And on that note, again, as good as some of the current X-Men cast members are, Feige will most likely want his own version of the X-Men, only keeping Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool, which Deadpool can totally comment on. Ah, the benefits of being a meta character. In fact, though, let's not forget that Feige is still fast-tracking an Eternals movie, who are basically space X-Men. Why would he continue to do that, even with the update that he might soon be getting the X-Men to play with himself? Hmm, methinks he might just want to use Deadpool for a while and wait on bringing back the Merry Mutants. As I've said before, I think the Fantastic Four uh, will be the most Disney-friendly uh, property in the Fox deal and therefore will be the first in line for an MCU makeover. So maybe we do Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe? Although that could be too gory for Disney. Uh, I mean, Disney has said they will continue to release R-rated uh, Deadpool movies. Bob Iger was very um, clear on that, but I don't think they're going to want to involve other characters uh, in such an R rating. Well, well, maybe, because my next point is going to play to that, but I think that basically they don't want to see like, characters like Iron Man and Captain America get, you know, killed on screen if it's not by Thanos. <laughs> okay, so anyway, and that was a pretty, it was literally PG-13 violence in that case. Uh, so instead, they could do a variation on Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe, coming up with another reason for Deadpool to go on a romp through the MCU with cameos aplenty. A movie that would print money, just like all the other Marvel movies, so Deadpool would fit right in. Uh, Deadpool could finally interact with his favorite superhero, Spider-Man, who he has a crush on in the comics, although here Spidey is underage. And while I don't think that would stop, well, I, you have to wonder where Ryan Reynolds draws the line, but I'm pretty sure that Disney draws it at underage <laughs> crushing. Um, but he also, uh, Deadpool also flirted with death in the comics, creating a nifty little love triangle uh, between them and Thanos. They could, there could be some fun there. Uh, and Deadpool also dated a succubus named uh, Shikla, so what I'm getting at here is they could bring Hela in, right, for some flirtation or just a team up, and that would certainly make sense based on the comics. And it would be hella fun. Uh, and hey, maybe Drew Goddard could direct whatever movie this turns out to be. But again, Feige likes to pick his own people, both in front of and behind the camera. But again, Ryan Reynolds is so strong in the role uh, and again has shown a willingness to play nice uh, that I think that he will be the only thing that survives um, the, MC, the, the Fox Disney merger in terms of Marvel uh, properties. So what adventure would you choose next for Deadpool? And by the way, speaking of choose your own adventure, Fox is developing that kind of technology so that audiences uh, can decide what literally happens next in a movie. So every time you go, it's a different movie uh, by voting on your cell phone uh, during the course of the film. And Marvel, by the way, just released a choose your own adventure Deadpool comic online. So Disney, could always use that Fox tech, which they would uh, own if once the deal goes through, for a choose your own adventure Deadpool movie. Synergy, thy name has always been Disney, which is partially why you're so full of win. So share your thoughts down below. Again, what you would like to see next for uh, Deadpool uh, in either scenario, if the, well, the merger is probably going to go through, but you know, what would you like to see happen? Uh, and of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.